when I was coming up, we had to go outside the city. We had to go travel, go out of town, beat down doors. Like this was the first time Bill was ever gone on the set. <laughs> and he said, here comes the token this is dark one. And out of my mouth, I said, F you. Fans are asking for a positive women and, you know, with family and business. Right. It's like, well, you know, that's that's what we bring to the show. And yet still, it's like, oh, she's boring. My, it's my real story. This is really who I am. I, I, I made, I build myself off a dollar and a dream without a man's help, without a basketball player. It's particularly the patriarchal boxes that white cisgender males have defined for us should be how we define ourselves. That's what they were saying on the street. I didn't say it. That's what they were saying on the street. The streets, the avenues, and the boulevard. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I'm your host, Sonya Hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single episode? You guessed it, I have another great show for you. But before I tell you about today's amazing guest, I need you to do me a quick favor. You know what it is, right? Because if you are a loyal watcher and listener of Sonya On Air, you know I'm gonna ask you to subscribe. Make sure that you subscribe to every Sonya On Air streaming platform. Sonya On Air streams across every major streaming platform. And if you're watching this on YouTube, not only subscribe, but make sure you hit the little notification bell. That way, every time I upload an all new celebrity interview unpacking their pivotal moments and milestones, you'll be the first ones to know. Now, on to today's guest. I'm super, super excited to talk to this amazing and talented actress by the name of Irma Cadiz. Now, let me repeat her name again, Irma Cadiz. If you are watching Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, like I am, and like everyone that I know, you will catch her on an upcoming episode. Matter of fact, on upcoming episodes, because she's playing Rock's hairstylist. Now, this actress, the reason why I'm so excited to talk to Irma is because I love, love, love speaking to working actors, people who are still grinding the pavement, people who are still acting by day, but then sell it coquito at night, <laughs> just like Irma. And I love me some coquito and it's around the holidays. So you're going to catch her in upcoming episodes of Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, and also on Law and Order. Two amazing shows. So why don't we do this? Why don't we just jump right on into this conversation with Irma? Because she's a fellow New Yorker like me. And I want to see about her coquito recipe. And I'm sure you do too. So let's get right on into it. Hi, Irma. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good. First of all, I'm excited because it's not too often that I get to have a conversation or an interview with a fellow New Yorker. Ah, I've been here long enough, but um, I'm upstate New Yorker, actually, born and raised in Rochester by the Lake Effect snow. I left there oh, yeah, like in... Yeah, yeah that, don't, that doesn't really yes. count. <laughs> no, that that's... that's uh, I'm more of an upstater. I've been here since probably 2009 because my family's always been here. So I always spent my summers here. Um, so I'm like a New Yorker by proxy. It's just uh -huh. eventually I moved here after a div eventually after a divorce because I was my first marriage. I was married in Florida. And I think New York City was the compromise. Like, uh -huh. I got to be around family. I don't want to go back to that snow after having lived <laughs> in Orlando. And I was like, OK, New York, we're acting. Just go to New York. Your aunts are there. Just and so I've been here since struggling right okay okay so we, we'll, we'll adopt you we'll adopt you you're a part of the new york family now we get yeah. it <laughs> so do you prefer rochester or do you prefer like the tri-state area better no 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 i prefer anything to rochester don't get me wrong it's my hometown like i don't want to say anything disparaging about my hometown right but um, i left okay i left when i was like 24 20 like i left i bounced and never looked back my, I still go back because my, my mom, dad, and sister, immediate family are still there. I don't think they're mm -hmm. ever leaving. Um, but other than that, you know, and I have some lifelong friends. So I'm not going to, obviously not going to bash my city. It, it, you know, that's like <laughs> most people grow up in a mid mid-sized city like that. You, you, you yearn for more, you know. Got um, it. But at the same time, <laughs> I don't miss, like. I don't know. I live in Harlem. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, <laughs> living in Harlem is a story by itself. 
That's a story uh, about yeah. housing in Harlem. Yeah, yeah. There, there's but some he, things I miss, like like appropriate housing. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, no, no! Talk about housing. Did you just see on the news that? Um, yeah, the Bronx. Uh, that's right by my cousin's. Uh, this actually, I just texted my cousin before logging on to you because it's right on their street. Um, I don't think oh, they know wow. anybody in that building because they're farther down where the houses are past uh, university. But okay. that's like literally, I walk that every time I go visit them. I'm like, wait, is that is that your block? <laughs> I don't. Um, I have no idea which building that is. I just saw it like you did online. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah I'm people are starting to, to put up videos. Like, people. yes, I'm waiting to hear more because what they were reporting yeah. on the five and six o'clock news was that they haven't found any bodies. Thank God. But I'm not too confident that that's still going to remain the same. Uh, would that be because they're under the rubble, though? Because would they find yeah. bodies that fast if there were any? You know what I mean? I don't know, but you I know, mean, unless it's somebody from the top floor, because it it was a seven story building, and the first floor had a bodega, and they yeah. said people were in the store. So we will wait to see how this story mm -hmm. unfolds. But I don't want to make this, you know, conversation too sad and solemn so because i really am so excited for my audience to learn no, about it's you tragic. It's tragic. very tragic very tragic yeah. but let's just jump right into you so working actress and i know traditionally when it comes to television or film we do not see too many people of color as representation although things have gotten better what made you want to become an actress yeah. knowing that there is so little representation of people of color? I don't know that I thought about that because I was yearning for it when I was so much younger. I did start experiencing things immediately, like being a comm major in college because I, I went to college in the 90s. I'm very much a Gen Xer, right? Um, there were pauses and I went back and finished as an adult, but I do very much remember professors telling classmates like, make her sound American, make her, you know, and that, that, that was cool. And I remember there was a fear a little bit with me, like with Shakespearean things, I wouldn't tackle them. Like I was somewhat aware of the whole colorism. Cause I remember thinking like, I'm, I, I sound like, a, like, I don't, how am I going to pull an English accent? Things like that, that I, I tackled more confidently as an adult, not as a youth, but I don't think I thought about the fact that we weren't represented at all. I just kind of really wanted to do it. I think I got a taste of it in high school when I did a stage play. And I didn't know you could study it in college, to be honest with you. That's where I went with the communication major because I started going with what I thought was tangible. Um, but then I would see the theater majors. I saw the classes. It's a world that started opening up. You know, but like everything else, I, I had kids. Um, things were put on pause and several times. But it's just something mm -hmm. that I never gave up on. I just kept coming back to it, you know, and it'll be there till the day that I die. You know, I might just be cracking into the door now, but I got time that, you know, I got time. <laughs> I can only go up from here. So That's got it. it. So you said you caught the acting bug by acting in a play during high school. So when was the critical moment that you really decided mm -hmm. to take acting seriously and you started taking maybe acting classes? It was it was right away in college. It, it was it proceeded from high school right into college. Um, but when you're young, you think you want something, but you don't necessarily have the focus. Right. Because there's other things going on. Parties, life, whatever. Right. When I seriously took it, when I took it seriously again after the kids uh -huh. where I really started shifting focus, I would say it was like in 2008 when my kids were 11 or 12 at the time, something like that. And then the other maybe was eight and I had help. Um, I started going to a studio called Art Sake down there in Orlando with one of my late professors who taught me Meisner. And then it, it, it's never stopped from there. There, there's, there might have been some pauses like during the teen years where I had to take a little break because life, you know, um, and dealing with what's happening at home. But I kept coming back to it and just doing it even on a small scale, like little commercials or a little weekend play, whatever I could do to keep my sanity during those times. And then now that my kids, my kids are grown now, they're 26 and 23. Now I have time. <laughs> now I have lots of time and I can actually like focus and actually have a manager and an agent and actually, you know, really stay on top of it. So, you know, but I'm, I'm blessed with a, a, a husband that is very supportive as well. So, hmm? 
That's important. I'm glad that you mentioned that because a lot of people, they have dreams, goals, aspirations, and life is always lifing. And I'm glad that you mentioned that although life was lifing, you decided to get back to it, even though there were gaps and delays. So, you know, that's just a reminder to people. You don't have to let your dreams and aspirations fall to the wayside. Get back to it when you have an opportunity. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. You have to. You have to take it. Honestly, I could tell you, I could save you some therapy money because that's that's where I got that from. Therapist during the rough teenage years was like, don't let that stuff go. Do not. It, every day that I walked into the offices, what did you do for you today? Because, you know, as mothers, we, you know, you're feeding them, you're getting them clothes. There's so many times when you go shopping, you think you're going to buy yourself something. You don't. You buy, you know. You forget about yourself. We always put ourselves last. We don't we don't make it to the salon anymore because we're so busy, you know. Um, and it's the one survival skill that he taught me. You have to take care of you. He, he did the airplane analogy. He said you have to put the gas mask on your face before you can help anybody else. Because if I'm resentful or if I pass out or if I'm whatever, exhausted, you know, I'm not happy. Nobody's happy. And I can't help anybody if I'm depleted in my gas tank. You know, so it's one of the things he taught me. Do not give up on your acting classes. Even if you have to save five dollars a week for your nails, do not stop doing them. Take care of yourself because these kids will grow up. You know, they'll move on. They'll, but you're here with, you know, three hairs left afterwards. And <laughs> so, yeah, no, never give up on those dreams there. You know, where is that going to go? It's going to be there. Where is it going? You know, if you have to take a pause. And that's not just with acting. That's with anything. Right. That's with anything. If, yes. if you have a dream about starting a business or whatever your goals might be in life. If you have to take a pause to take care of yourself and to handle life, which happens, that's fine. It'll be there waiting when you get back. And yes, that's, I yes. live by that model. So. Well, I'm so glad that you remained consistent yeah. and persistent with your goals and aspirations of being an actress because you are going to be on upcoming episodes of Power Book 3, Raisin Canaan, starring as, what's your character's name, Valentina? Yeah. Talk about your character, Valentina. Yeah. Talk about your character. I am. You know, it's 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 not a major role, but it's a major empire, and I I I that door opened for me just a little bit, and I am so <laughs> happy. I am. Um, I play Rock's hairstylist, so mm-hmm. I'm going to be right there next to Patina Miller. It, you know, if 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 I am blessed with them, because you know sometimes things end up on the cutting room floor. Floor, but as far as we know, if they use that footage, we're all going to find out together on Friday. Uh, I'm Valentina and I, I couldn't be more ecstatic about it because that's my my first big role, you know. Right. How did you find out about uh the role Valentina? Or should I say that's the best role I've seen? How did you find out about the role so that you could audition? It was an audition that my manager sent me. Hmm. So you my only my manager audition- sent it to me. Um, did you, you audition you for roles, other roles? Um, did you audition for other roles besides Valentina or just on Valentina? that on that series or in general? On that series. Oh, no, yeah, audition is a lifestyle for me. It's a lifestyle. I, I, no, no, not on that series. Um, that was my first audition for that series, and I was lucky enough to book it, book it because that's not always the case. I've auditioned for several series time and time again. And um, and if they like you, they'll keep auditioning you. They'll keep bringing you back to read for another character or another character. And, uh, so, and you know, sometimes you never get called in. Uh, yeah. I guess it was just my time that, you know, I auditioned for it and I got it. And I'm grateful for how that, many, you know. How many times did you have to audition? For that role? You yes. get an audition. I think I submitted one self-tape for that, actually. Oh, was one. okay. Because I know usually sometimes they have you come back. They want to see the chemistry between you and other characters. So you just submitted. They have a callback. Yes. All right. That's for a bigger role. The bigger the role gets, the harder that climb is. Um, this one is a it's 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 recurring, but it's considered a co-star, right? I don't have 10 million lines. I go in there, I do my part, you know, I feed the story, I leave. Um, so for that, if they like your energy enough on screen, uh, they don't have to necessarily call you back. Sometimes they do. But the bigger the role, if I move up, if you move up to like guest star where you got a ton of lines and you're now you're really carrying a story, even if you're not a series regular. You might get a call back here. You know, it's it's different for every series, though, and for every show. I've had callbacks for commercials. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's it's a little different. It, you know, you never know how that's going to go. Right, right, right. It. I I got it. I got it. And you're also going to be um, appearing on Law and Order in January 2024. 
Is that correct? Talk about that right. role. That that's a part too. And, and again, another small role, big empire, right? I'm 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 a, a law and order fanatic, probably like anybody else. But uh, you know, I I don't get to watch it as much anymore because I've uh, been off of cable for a while. But I used to watch it. Oh my God, SVU, all of it. And to be honest, I got my opportunity passed because that it's the original Law and Order, and that stopped filming for a while. And in New York City there's a, a saying that every actor goes through law and order. Like that's like popping your cherry. <laughs> every actor in the city has gone through law and order, but I hadn't, I had not. And I got called in, I did an audition for them and booked a role that aired last winter. And I'm a clerk, I announce a case. You know, I'm literally the person that calls out the case number, da -da 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 -da, calling out docket, 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 people versus so-and-so, that was my role. Um, I didn't think any more would come of that, but they called me back in. So. God willing, I'm in the first episode of the new season. Nice. Another case with the same judge, mind you, the same girl. The same, you know, I'm with Judge Patel again. So let's hope that this is a recurring thing. <laughs> they yes, can call me yes. just if Law and Order is watching. You can call me back anytime you want. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm sure they will. So, what's yes, your dream role? Exciting. What's yeah. your dream role? You're gonna make me say that out loud. Yes. <laughs> it's not so much the role as it is who I wanna work with. I wanna, I wanna, I have goals of working with Spielberg at some point. Uh, dream roles. I like anything that where I can get a little bit dirty. I like anything where I, I actually love being a supporting character. I feel like they have a lot more drama going on and a lot more juice. And I like roles where you really, get into people's reality, um, whether that be abuse or whether that be, you know, just things going on. I find that roles like that, even in theater, have helped me cope with whatever was going on in my life too. And it, it brings a humanity to us. Um, so we'll see. Um, I love period pieces. That that seems to shock people all the time, but I love period pieces. I'm like a Last Kingdom fanatic <laughs> and, and an Outlander fanatic, you know, so you put me in anything like that where I get to wear a corset, and I'll tell you, I've made it. So, who knows? So, since you like period pieces, limits. have you watched The Gilded Age? That's amazing. Have you watched that series? I have not yet. I have not yet. I have not yet. No, nope. oh, that's a good one. I have that's watched. I I think I have a friend who does work on that actually because I keep seeing her posting about it, but I have not watched it yet. Got it. Got it. now. Oftentimes when we look at now that I see Oftentimes when we look at television or we go to see movies, oftentimes we can imagine ourselves and other actors or actresses. What actor or actress do you look up to? I can tell you, and it circles back to the question you asked me before when I started wanting to take the classes again, Kara yes. Knightley, actually. Really? I, I watch her and yeah. Because again, it goes back to the period pieces and she's done modern stuff too, but she's also done a lot. Um, Pride and Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Pride. Uh, can I even say that right? Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Mr. Darcy, hello. You know, but watching her, I it's, it's something about watching her because she has a genuine smile and she she's she's very genuine with whatever it is she does. I love watching her. And I think if anything pushed me to take those classes again back in 2008, it was watching her. Got it. Now let's oh. talk about honing in on your craft or perfecting your craft. How often do you go to acting classes? Because I see that you are part of a member of the Chelsea Repertoire Theater. So how mm -hmm. often do you take mm -hmm. acting classes? It does not stop. Um, practicing your art is like going to a gym. That's what we are thought, that's taught many, many years ago, it, it's, it's, you move it or you lose it. You, you know, some things come intuitively, but the things you got to flex the muscle, um, to make, not to make those cliche comparisons, but it's constant. It's every week. And if you're not in the classroom setting, you're doing it with a friend, you're doing it with your auditions, you're doing it with your reader, you're doing it, you know, the audition for Canaan, I had a coach for that. I have a wonderful coach named Anna Suzuki, who was right there with me when I did that audition reading for me. It's constant. And if you're not in a class, you're reading the books. If you're not reading a books, you're studying the films. You know, you're studying other people's self tapes. You, it's constant. It, mm. That doesn't stop. It's like any other education. It's kind of, it's kind of like I could compare that to the career I've had in hair, right? 
we were told in school from day one, you will never stop educating yourself because uh, though the basics, right, do not change. And that's, that's the same in math and in anything, right? One plus one and two plus two and multiplying by, but things evolve, things continue to develop. And if you do not continue to educate yourself, you're going to fall behind. That's going to happen in any career, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, following law, whether you're a hairstylist, and it's going to flow right into acting. You have to flex that muscle. You have so to. So it's constant. And that was another teachable moment or a gem, mm -hmm. because in this age of social media, you know, people are only talking about the glory and not the story. And people are thinking that, you know, they're just going to submit something and then wham, they're an overnight success. And I'm glad that you mentioned that you have to put in the work. You have to keep exercising your muscles. So thank you for mentioning mm -hmm. that. But also what I want my audience to know is that and you mentioned it briefly, you are a hairstylist for 20 plus years. People need to understand that because you got to pay the bills. So working in the salon by day, also taking acting classes, going on auditions. How do you manage all of that and still stay true to yourself? I did. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I fell apart a little bit. Listen, some things suffer at different times because, you you know, once you have the kids, right? That, at least this was my storyline, right? I had all these dreams, but I had kids. Broop, my story stopped right there or it paused, I should say, it didn't stop, right? But suddenly it wasn't about me, it was about them, right? I had to feed them. And I found out I was gonna be a single mom. So, you know, for me hairdressing, it was my plan B. I had my parents help me while I, you know, that was a rough year. Thank God I had my mother. Um, Cause my daughter, when she was first born had surgeries and everything, right? So I was literally the first year of her life, I had to be on social services so that I could be with my child during the day work nightclubs at night. That was the first year. So I could have some money coming in to take care of her, right? Sec and while she was having her surgeries, because I didn't want anybody else other than my mother touching her um, surgery. But um, that second year of her life, once she hit one years old, I enrolled in hair school. And again, thank God for my parents, because from nine to three, hair school. The hotel that I worked at was a block over. They allowed me to come in at 3.15 and I was there till 11. And then I would pick up my daughter, literally pick her up from my mother's just so I could sleep with her at night and go do it five days a week. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, it, as grinding is not something that I'm unfamiliar with. You know what I mean? But I busted that out for about a year till I got that license. And then that's when I bought a car. That's when I started, you know, and, and that was my plan B. And that's how I raised. And it's not a career to be shy about. It's a great career, you know, because and I have a theme with everything I do. Right. You got to love what you're doing. Yeah. You go to work every day. You got to love what you do. Mm -hmm. And I'll say it to the cows grow home. You know, I don't, I don't care if you're making a little less money, but if you're happy about you, what you do, you're going to get up and you're going to go. You're not going to be looking for ways to call out of work or anything like that. You're going to go because you're happy about what you're doing. So that was a good plan B to have while I had to feed these kids. You know what I mean? It was a good way to raise them. Um, and when they, you know, when they got old enough, I could continue pursuing the acting, you know, but no, you, 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 life is life. Those bills are going to keep coming. Yeah. You got to yeah, do what yeah. you got to do. But if you have a passion for something, you're not going right. to let it go. It's like breathing, right. you know, I was taught right. a long time ago, we are creators, right? If you have any, uh, you know, everybody has their different faiths, but for the most part, people believe that there's a creator, right? Whether that's God for you, whether that's the universe, but it, that's a creator. We're made in that image. We are also creative people. Right. And you take that away from us. What is life about? You know? Mm. So, yeah, I always came back to it. Good, good. So many teachable moments. And I'm hoping that people can really grab onto them. Um, the hustle is always real. And I, I just want people to have reminders that it doesn't happen overnight or just by throwing, you know, one stone into the lake and then expecting this big ripple effect. It doesn't happen that way. Consistency, hard work, grind, hustle, loving what you do. Those are all ingredients to your success. And I don't want to I didn't like when you said, you know, well, it's not a big role. It's a role. It's a contribution. Yeah, no, it's big. To it no. is big, especially for me, because <laughs> I it's the first time I've had a SAG role. Um, I just I think that's the humility in me. And that could be some imposter syndrome because I don't like, the, you know. Yeah. When I, when I first started doing these interviews, I'm like, yeah, I'm just I'm only on a couple episodes doing her hair. Like, I don't, you, you know, but it it is a big role. It is a big. It is. I should not understand. Um, yeah, because I, I'm I sitting there next you. to Patina Miller. Exactly. Am, yeah. You're sitting next to Patina Miller, and yeah. I'm sure that there are yeah. other people watching who would love to be in your shoes. So we can't minimize 
what yes. you've done yes. and what you will continue yes. to yes. do. You are, you're, not, you're absolutely right about that. And I probably needed to hear that. I needed to hear that because it's something I've been doing a lot. Mm -hmm. and saying, oh, hey, calm down. It's not that serious, you know, <laughs> and like almost trying to trying to not step out of my shoes, you know. But yeah, no, I, I got to be on a show. I can die right now and say I got to be on a show that was powered by 50 Cent. Somebody yes. who I watched because, again, I'm a Gen X. They're OK. So, so it's like, oh, my. Yeah, I, I have no complaints. But you there mentioned you so you now have your SAG after card, correct? Yeah, because congratulations. of the show. Congratulations. Now, Billy Porter, recently he made a comment that said that he is only receiving three cent residual checks and he has his SAG card. Now, at what point do you think an actor really makes enough money to afford the cost of living and to say, Mama, I made it? At what point does that happen? If you're a good budgeter. <laughs> you need that one big break. I think part of what you hear me saying is I haven't had my one big break, right? I still got a job. I'm still out here hustling coquito. You know what I mean? I still have a husband who supports me and helps me go through this because no, you're not making big money right away acting. You know, you, for every little check you think you get, right? Like you might get paid, you know, the numbers sound big, but think about this breakdown, right? If I get paid 1200 for being on set one day, 1200, right? There's taxes, yeah. obviously, just like anything else. Everybody who has a paycheck knows half of that check's gone already be, with, with the taxes. Then mm -hmm. I got to give a cut to my agent. I got to give a cut to my manager. You know what I mean? Then you got to count all the money, just like any other business that I've already invested in this from headshots to getting footage to the education that we're speaking about. How much money do you think is actually left yeah. of that one day that you were on set? And think about how many gigs I just, you just named maybe four SAG gigs that I've had four days mm -hmm. on set. Mm -hmm. No, five total. So have mm -hmm. I really, I'm still going to be working after this. I'm like, still, <laughs> I'm waiting for the, you know, it, that's why they call it the big break. At right. some point after all that mm -hmm. hustling and grinding, you will finally make it and you will finally have the role that you can say, oh, I can retire. I can, I can buy, you know. When I've finally been able to purchase that home and, and purchase the one for my, that's when you've made it and you can take it easy. I'll be grinding until that day comes, but that takes time. It's not, you know, yeah. it, it's not as quick as you, people think. It's not as quick as you, and you got to know how to budget. Mm -hmm. If you come on this money, because we've all seen this, right? In our past, we've seen it with so many celebrities that came across all this money, or but it was either mishandled or they weren't, you know, maybe they didn't read those contracts thoroughly. Um, so I'm grateful that I am a grinder because when that budget comes, I'm going to be ready to right. distribute it, distribute it accordingly as far as I'm concerned. Right. But, um, but that just comes from having been a single mom and knowing how to, you know, hustle and grind. But if you come into this young, you might not know those things and you might think that fountain right. is just going to keep rolling and it, it's not, you know, I, I'm definitely not there yet, but, 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 it, but people, maybe somebody's but out there watching and maybe they're going to give you that big break. <laughs> <laughs> but people yeah. do hear oh, yeah. that because they I mean, see you on television, they see people in film and they think that they're rich. They don't know that, you know, mm. there's an order to all of this. And just because you see your name, you know, on the television screen, it doesn't mean that you're rolling in bank. So that was another teachable moment. What do you think about this entire reality no. TV celebrity space where reality TV stars are now being considered celebrities? What do you think about that? without any type of formal training? I mean, well, I think that the industry has been good about separating what a reality star is and what an actor is. So there's at least that to be said about that. But, and, and I don't knock either. They're two different realms, right? But we cannot deny that social media has evolved and changed the way things roll now. Um, similar to the way that musicians can now promote themselves you know, it used to be a time where you had to wait for a record label and you had to wait for somebody to discover you. And now people can just promote themselves. Justin Bieber is a testament to that. You can literally put yourself out there on YouTube. It's the same thing with people in any realm, whether that be in the cooking realm, whether that be whatever you're into, you can start putting your footage out there. And yeah. if you're true to it and it's something you believe in, because that's what makes or breaks people, right? Work will come to you. Yeah. People will find 
find you if you love what you do they're gonna you know there's there's so many niches out there and people will be able to find you so that landscape has definitely changed yeah I, I couldn't even be, be able, i there's no way i could even begin to go into the intricacies of that but that landscape has changed and there are even agents out there now for social media yes. people yeah you know what i mean because you, you build enough of a it's basically your own channel you build a right. channel of your own and you're, that's why it's so important to be careful what you're putting out there on social media because that is your face yeah. that is your your mm -hmm. book cover Mm -hmm. It's what you make it, right? Um, so you don't want to be putting your personal life on there to a certain degree. You know, you don't want to put your dirty laundry on there. You know, because right. everybody's looking at that. Your job is looking at that. Friends are looking at that. People that don't know you are looking at that. You know what I mean? And when you die, guess what's going to be there? <laughs> Whatever imprint you left for the world, that that's what's going to be left. Yes, your digital so, yeah, footprint. Literally. So if someone offered you uh, a role... Yeah, well, I'm sorry, what did you say? I was saying centuries from now, it's like a time machine. People will be it studying is. us and our behaviors from what was going on on social media. Yes, yeah. time capsule. So if someone offered you a role on a reality show, would you accept it or no? Um, I think it depends. I, I, Cause I, to a certain extent, I, I did a cooking competition on PBS. Yeah. That was reality to a certain uh -huh. extent. It was competitive cooking, you know? So I wouldn't say no. I don't think I would like housewives or something like that. No, I don't think I would mm. uh, only because I'm definitely a crier. <laughs> I can't be on a show like that. <laughs> I'm not knocking anybody who's on it. Cause people have made livings off of that. You know, and they, there have been entire empires as we, as we actually, that show was a great example. There have been empires made of it. Entire mm. careers have been made of it. Um, these people are not necessarily considered actors, but they are definitely considered personalities. Yes. And we know who they are and they have made, you know, and if not, they've made livings off of that. So I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that I am definitely a crier. <laughs> that may not be for me. <laughs> I will definitely be the victim on one of those shows. <laughs> you know, so it might be good for, for uh, that being able to be in tune with my emotions might be good for acting because you need to see that. Right. right? And I, I have no issues with showing them. Up. But for a reality show, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I actually started. Um, I had a friend who did a sizzle reel for an, a reality show when I first got to New York City. We actually took some footage of um, she had a whole concept for single moms in the arts and whatnot. And I think she was I'm not going to say the title of it because if it ever, you know, she, but she had a nice concept and we actually shot some footage, but it just never came to be. Mm -hmm. But when I think on it. For me, that might be a good thing, uh, just because. I probably wasn't ready. I didn't know what was looming with the teen years. My kids were little still. I had just gotten here. And yeah, just like I say, the world probably would have seen me uh, like, oh my God, this girl needs therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the world don't need to know me like that. They don't need to know me like that. Like, no. no. <laughs> Let's bring back the uh, mystery of old Hollywood, please. <laughs> no, they don't need to know that. Oh, I <laughs> love old Hollywood. On the other side, but I'll be <laughs> yeah. yeah okay, so you talked about crazy, yeah. I get it. You talked about being an actress. You talked about also cooking briefly on the cooking show. But I did not know, and this is around the holidays, you are also called New York City's Coquito Lady. When did that happen? Yes, ma'am. Talk about that. Because I might be buying some. I Really? <laughs> but well, it goes right back to that grind I was talking about. I started doing it during COVID, like many people did. Many people started side hustles. And yes. uh, you know, I went right back to, I knew I wanted to do something. I wasn't working. I was home as we all were. Um, and I didn't think I wanted to go full time back to work either. You know what I mean? I wanted to invest in myself for once. And, and uh, I mean, little did I know I'd be working every day, but... <laughs> That's a story for another day with businesses. <laughs> <laughs> but my mind went to what do I already love doing? What do I already mm -hmm. love? You know, and I was already experimenting and making that stuff for my family on the holidays. And it's it's something I really enjoyed. So that's what came to me. And I, I literally bought a cooler during COVID. I think I spent like $60 on Amazon. I bought a cooler. I bought some, some icy sleeves and I literally made some, froze it. And I went out and I hit the street. I was literally in Harlem screaming out, culture served on ice, get your coquito, Christmas in July. And, and, and it just, it took off from there. I've been blessed from that moment on. Yeah. But another teachable moment because people are always asking, well, what should I do? I don't know what I should do next. Tap into what you love to do. You're already doing it. 
you already and just, doing. Exactly. Yeah. And just do it. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So where can people purchase your coquito? Because I, I see that you have strawberry, you have uh Dulce de leche. <laughs> <did> your homework. <laughs> oh, yeah, honey. Because mm -hmm. I love me some coquito. I'm really going to order some. Where can they purchase the coquito? Oh, that's amazing. They can go to coquitolady.com. It's C O Q U I T O L A D Y.com. We're in e commerce. I ship nationwide. I don't ship outside of the country, however. And we also, for New Yorkers, we schedule curbside pickups as well. So, Oh, and you wow. can also follow on Instagram if you want to follow the adventures on Coquito Lady NYC. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So for sure. selling Coquito, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're an actress. What else is next for you? I mean, who's to say? I mean, you know, let's just put it out there that I continue to act. Let's put it out there that somebody buys my Coquito company. Let's put it out there that when I become famous, I have that brand and I can show the world what it is. Let's just put that out there, you know? Um, that's just where my head is. It's I think about it every day. Like when I put out into the universe what I want for myself, I want to become a household name and I want that product to become a household name. Um, I want to share my passion about my culture with the world. Yeah. And I want to be able to do what I love every single day. Um, yeah. Got it, got it. But it's I exhausting trying to hustle. Let me tell you, it's exhausting. Trying oh, to I know. It, Let me tell you something, um, Irma. This is a true mm -hmm. story. So I wanted to get a, a, a camera, a professional camera, because I was starting to do a lot of red carpet. I waited until, what was it, Labor Day. Have you ever heard of the, the West Indian Parade on Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn for Labor Day? Yes. I yes. was out there with my yes. mother. My mother selling, uh, what do you call those things, the drinks? Um what's that drink? Nutcrackers? What were yes. you selling? Nutcrackers. Nutcrackers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were a New Yorker. Why are you asking me? Why are you asking me? <laughs> I just had a brain freeze. But just talk about the hustle. Do what you know how to do in order to get to where you want to go. <laughs> so There's always that's a hustle out here, honey. If you're broke, it's because you want to be broke. So exactly if, you, if your legs work if your limbs work if you got a laptop and if you got a mountain you can sell yes yes so my yeah. mother was right with me on eastern uh parkway selling nutcrackers <laughs> so i can get me a camera That's and great. thankfully i That's did great. buy my camera great. but going back to your, your character valentina real quick before we close out this conversation what does your character bring to the episodes that you're in Talk about it. Like, is she feisty? Is she quiet? Is she loving? Talk about your character. <laughs> I think my character, you know, there's not much I could say about that because it hasn't aired, but it's, I bring information. It's probably the most I could say. I bring information mm -hmm. to our cat, to our main star. Um, really? I like to say I bring a little bit of character, you know, it's a Dominican hair salon. <laughs> and if you've ever been to the salon, I mean, you know, uh, I don't think I can say much more than that without getting I got into it. a little bit of trouble. But so. did they briefly introduce <laughs> you? I mean, if you're getting, if you're getting, I get it. But did they briefly introduce? You, did they briefly introduce you, your character, on last week's episode? Because I did see Rock go into the hair salon, and I saw some hands. We were supposed to. Yeah. You saw my, you saw just little bits of me. I was watching too, to see girl. how much they were going to show. You know, I saw you. It's funny. That's something to be known about that world. When I tell you so much footage was shot that day, there was extras all in that room. I think we saw the receptionist only, right? When we shot all that footage, it was a full day. There was a receptionist. There was an assistant sweeping the floor. There were several clients in the chat. Just to show the extreme amount of footage that can be shot, you know, they were filming me spraying and, you know, flinging the cape, washing her hair. But what got in was my chin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, but that's not going to draw. And that's probably why you see me hesitating, to be honest with you, because uh, part of the reason I hesitated to do these interviews is because you just don't know how much they're going to show. Yeah. You don't. You never do. There, there's an expression that some things get left on the cutting room floor. So we're all going to find out Friday what gets left on the cutting room floor and what shows, you know, that we can, we can only cross our fingers. The work is done. 
Right. Um, but in the end, those are decisions. And that's another part of this world that people may not realize. Um, I'll always have the credit because I booked the job and I did the job and I filmed the job. Um, but it's on them how much footage they use. And, yeah. you know, that's another part of this world that a lot of people don't realize that that's an expression. Things get left on the cutting room board. And in the, in the final um, say and the final magic happens in editing. Right. So we'll see. Right. We're going to find out together. I get it. So one <laughs> final question. What did your kids say about you being on upcoming episodes of Power Book 3, Raising Canaan? What did your kids say? Because you know your kids are the your toughest critics. What did they say? You know, I was just about to say, um, <laughs> your kids, I mean, they're happy for their mom, but at the same time, they're not that excited. I mean, they've been watching me grind this for a long time. Honestly, they've grown up watching me audition. They've grown up watching it. Some of these things don't become real until they see it. I know when yeah. they saw finally the footage of the cooking, so they were really excited to see me on that. They were really excited to watch me compete. And when, you know, sometimes you don't think they're listening or learning, but they are. And I will say that when I didn't make it past like this, I did like two episodes, I think. And I think they felt really, they were really sad, but at the same time, they were also my biggest supporter. Cause once they saw that I was sad, they were like, wait, but you weren't the first one to go, right? Hey, and then they made me feel like, you know, <laughs> that, that's your kids. Um, yes. I think they're proud of their mom. I hope they're watching. Cause you know, I don't know if, you know, your friends that have kids who are Gen Zers, there's a little concern for that generation. Yeah, my daughter's 28, so I, I trust So me. hopefully they're watching and learning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I, I you, let me let me um, let, 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 let me let me conversation for another day about this thing, but uh, <laughs> they have so many maladies, don't do they not? Yes, yes, they all yes, have anxiety. Yes. Let, me, yes. let me not start bashing Gen Z, but they all have something. Yes, they have yes. over diagnosed themselves, and I, th I thought it was just my kids. When I talked to my friends with no. kids of the same age, it's that whole I'm, generation. you know, we're Gen X's, so I'm like, what's wrong with these kids? The like, whole generation. I just spoke yeah. to a teen. I think it, we might be seeing the effects of they grew up with social media. Yeah. 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 Social media has a lot to do with it. And every teenager. I, I do think, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, it's hard enough for us, I feel, with social media. Mm -hmm. And we were introduced to it. Like, I, I think in college, we saw the first chat rooms, right? Where it was just a whole code and you were excited that somebody was actually texting you back on the computer. Like that's how it started. And then eventually it was like AOL and dial up, but we right. kind of went from not having any of that to you know, what it is now, whereas they kind of grew up with this stuff. Yeah. So I can't imagine, cause it's addicting. I think for adults, we spend a, you know, a lot of time in front of these screens. I can't imagine with them how debilitating that must be. Cause well, yes. I can't, well, we don't have to imagine that. I think we're seeing it. Yeah, they like they to would. say it's not social media and it's not the internet. They, say, they like to tell me I'm oversimplifying that. But I could tell you that for me, in my experience, like I feel like the worst of the teenage years was all over social media. They got into hell of trouble over social media. They were willing to risk it all over those stupid yeah. little telephones. And yeah. now I'm looking at them like, yo, at this age, I mean, I'm grateful they don't have kids. I'm not ready to be a grandma or anything. And I don't think they, <laughs> I'd be concerned. Because you right. know, by this age, I did have them I was already hustling and grinding. And I'm just looking at my kids like, they're not ready. Doing? You can get up. Like, what's up? <laughs> right, right. You can even fill out health insurance papers. Like, they, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, what's okay? And then they so tell one... me, yeah. <laughs> so, one final question. For the person out there who's watching this 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 conversation or listening to this conversation, who is thinking about becoming an actor, what advice do you have for him or her? Go to school, like take the, the classes, like uh, learn how to act before you try to do anything else. Because I, I think what I see in this industry and in some of the groups and things, a lot of people try to bypass. Oh, can I just get headshots? Like. Like they think they're just going to be because they're cute. You know, uh, let me just get headshots and see if I could try to get an age in it. No, take the classes. Yeah, it's 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 going to show up if you haven't. Um, and you might get away with a few, few small things here and there and a few commercials. But the truth is, when it comes to the work that you really want, you have to be able to produce the goods. And and an agent isn't going to take you on until they see the gift that you have. And that's going to come. You know, you got to crawl before you walk. So if you're serious about it and you've never done it before, find a good reputable acting school and sign up just like anything else. Um, I think people see the limelight and they don't realize there's an education behind it, just like everything else. And it's an industry and it's a business just like anything else. And it comes down to money. And if people yeah. are going to invest in you because that's what an agent is doing, 
right? Mm. They got to know they're going to make money off you. They got to know that you got the goods. So just like anything else, and I know people don't want to hear that, but go to school. And there are so many great, just like you mentioned, the acting studio in New York City. Um, there's so many. So there are. You know, I didn't from even very expensive to very affordable. And even the expensive ones like we are, yeah. There's scholarships too on top of that. You got to remember that. And yeah. there's very good. I went, I graduated finally from Brooklyn College. Brooklyn College is CUNY, very affordable, and they have an immaculate theater program and they have a oh. TV club. Like there's so many places you could start. Um, so don't let money be a deterrent because at a school like that, you can definitely go to school affordably and they have scholarships on top of that. So if you're serious about it, you'll be able to mm -hmm. almost with next to nothing with that education and get put your foot in the door and get started. Got it. Got it. But you're absolutely right. There are a lot of acting companies and theaters out there. I was walking on the Lower East Side um, about two weeks ago and I ran into a theater company where Nicole Ari Parker, she was a member putting on a play. So once again, these A-list actors mm -hmm. and actresses, they are still members of theater companies further honing in and perfecting. You their always it becomes your family after a while too. They do become your family. Um, some of those relationships that you see on screen where you seem to see the same actors working together, you'd be surprised how long some of them may have known each other or have known the director. They don't, because once you start building a circle, you know, you tend to work together again with these people if you get along and um, they do become a family. You've seen that with um, Stephen Adley Gurgis's group. Uh, these people are family. Uh, Colon Sayas, who's on The Bear, She's part of that theater group. These, these people all still hold each other very near and dear. And they're well known to all of us, you know, and they all started at the same little theater, you know, lab. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, find yourself a group, you know, get that education, find yourself your group and start building your community. Because New York City, one thing that you can agree with me, very big, so many yes. people, but it can be very lonely if you yes. do not start building building your groups, right? But once you start growing, joining your groups, whether that's your acting group, your gym group, your whatever you're into, it starts getting a little smaller, does it not? Because you start getting to know these circles and you, mm -hmm. you need that here. And that, that's what it's like in that world. It also represents itself in acting. These people get to know each other. So you, and you need that family because it goes without saying that this career can be very depressing. It's a very rejection-based career. For every, when I started before there were self-tapes, it was about 50 auditions to every booking. It's mm -hmm. a lot more than that now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're auditioning all day, hoping to get that final role. If I show you my actor's access and how many self tapes I've submitted for a couple of years before I finally got this, even this one role, you'd be like, holy crap, you know, it's work, it's work. So you need that kind of uh, support group, you do. Wow. Well, you know, just amazing advice um, lessons, gems, your own experience, teachable moments. Irma, thank you so much for having this conversation with me and for blessing my platform, Sonia on Air. Yeah. Continue blessings to you in your acting career. This is only the beginning. And um, when you secure your next role, I'm going to invite you back so that we can discuss that. Okay? Yes, 100%. <laughs> One hundred percent. I will be back. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. No thank you for problem. powering through the little glitches. Yes. We got through it. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Thank well, you. I'm going to continue with this show. Thank you so much, and I'll talk with you soon. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Take care. So there you have it, Irma. Now, she minimized her role. We don't want to do that because you have to start somewhere and. As Irma alluded to, well, she matter-of-factly said she got the acting bug when she was in high school, when she started to play. Very young. Life was lifing. She had kids. She got married. She moved. But through it all, she remains consistent to her purpose and passion and her love for acting. So for as many no's as she received, this one loud and resounding yes comes in the form of her playing Valentina on upcoming episodes of Power Book 3, Raisin Caning. I'm watching every single week. Stars, do me a favor. Just don't wait so long between series. But I forgot, I had Shane Johnson. He played on Ghost. And he told me why. So if you want to know why, Stars is always kind of 
putting so much space between all of their different series. Tune in to my Sign You On Air celebrity interview with Shane Johnson. This has been uh, an amazing edition of Sign You On Air. Once again, please subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the notification button. That way, every time I upload an all new Sign You On Air celebrity interview, unpacking their pivotal moments and milestones, you'll be the first ones to know. Now go ahead and subscribe. Smooches dolls. Take care. Mwah.